Today, it is the final stop and grand finale of the 2022 Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series live from Sydney, Australia, as we cap off one of the most exciting competition seasons ever and one of the most exciting cities on earth. Trace Worthington here, as always, psyched to be joined by cliff diving expert and Australian resident Joey <laughs> Zuber. Joey, this is the first time the World Series has come to Sydney. The sun is out, thousands of spectators here to support. You have the Sydney Opera House in the background, the Harbour Bridge. Come on, dude, this is awesome. You guys know how to throw a good party. Oh, we do, mate. It's in our DNA, it's in our blood. Oh, look, being an Aussie, I'm super proud to see this competition on home soil. It's been a long time coming. The entire cliff diving community is stoked to be here. Uh, the last stop took place in the Puglia region of Southern Italy in Polignano Amare, a favorite spot for the divers. And that brings us here to Sydney for the third time this season. The World Series is held at a new location and the third time showcased at or near Near a famous opera house as we see Molly Carlson warming up doing a wonderful job so far this season wrapped up second place for the entire season will she win the final stop it's gonna to be tough with Rhiannon Iflin and how she's diving that man right there Nikita Fedotov the independent athlete he has a chance to become a permanent diver in 2023 all he needs to do not easy though stay no, in the top six and check this out three men in contention and it will all come down to the last dive Gary Hunt for the first time this season leads. He has 1,040 points. Aiden Heslock, who has idolized Gary his whole life, in second place, 34 points behind him. And finally, in third, Catalin Preda, who is six points behind Heslock and 40 points behind Hunt. And that is a good way to segue into the next part. Competition strengths, Joey, in your methods of motion topics, specifically the three men in contention that I mentioned. Now, we haven't been in this situation for over a decade. And what's fascinating to me, leading into this showdown, all three men have three distinctly different toolkits. And how about Kathleen Preda leading for a majority of the season up until the previous stop. Now he's placed in third in the series rankings. So his physical strength combined with the aesthetic advantage is his best tool in the box. Also, he struck the right balance between difficulty and execution. What about this guy, Heslop? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the dynamic youngster, Aiden Heslop, ranked second. One of the most exciting athletes we've seen in a long time. What he brings to the workbench is raw talent and an unprecedented level of difficulty with the world's most difficult dive. And he showed us the power of that tool that earned him two wins this season. Who's this guy? Oh, it's Gary Hunt, <laughs> our series leader coming into Sydney, the greatest of all time. So his ability to handle pressure in crucial moments is the best instrument under the hood. In addition, he has more reps and muscle memory. And to put that into context, he's more likely to nail it when it counts. And we have no idea idea, Joey, what tool will be the most effective for those three being a brand new location? Anything is possible. However, after the th first three rounds, those three men are in the top three. Much different than the past. We're going to start with the men. Four rounds of diving. Three have been have concluded. So let's get you up to speed and take a closer look at a few highlights of the men's earlier rounds, Joey. The road to the King Kakili Trophy still yet unpaid. That it is. So watching round one, Nikita Fedotov shakes things up. Oh, I just love looking at these dives. The flying front. And a whole bunch of nines from the judges. So he was leading after round one, tied with Blake Aldridge. Then Gary Hunt, his <laughs> weapon of choice that never, ever fails. So Gary on this dive has never scored under nines. As a matter of fact, in round two, he scored two tens from the judges. Seriously, this guy is just on fire. And then Catalin Preda as an answer to that with a beautiful rip entry. And his answer was, hey, I can also score ten. So he scored one ten from the judges there. Then the youngster, Aiden Heslop, with the triple quad. Such a dynamic diver. As we said before, very exciting to watch. A slight miscalculation on entry, though. That puts a lot of pressure on Aiden Heslop coming into the fourth and final round. Beautiful shots. Wow. Look at that. Beautiful skyline of Sydney, Australia. Once again, the first time the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series has dis descended upon this beautiful city. Getting closer to the fourth round. Let's hear from the top three guys in contention for the King Kai Keeley Trophy. 
I mean, it's the final round, you know. The competition will be over when uh, when we're all through with uh, with executing our final and last dive of the season, actually. Um, I'm just doing. I'm going through my normal routine, and uh, I will. I will just wait for it to to unfold and, and manifest. Same as uh, as every time that I've been uh, I've been putting it to use. It's uh, it's exciting, nonetheless. It's super exciting. It's the final. It's the final round, but it's exciting. It's a very stressful day today. I mean, the three of us up this close. Uh, this third round today hasn't been quite how I wanted it. Um, it was a little bit nice. Well, I did two in training. One was a little bit of a hit and the second one was nice so this was a little bit in the middle I was expecting something better I've got some work to do on this last last dive now so hopefully I can put it down for some good points uh, I just tried to soak in the the fact that one dive is done I'm happy with it and now I can uh, finish this show off thank you so much good luck if Gary Hunt wins, it'll be the 10th of his career, bringing it into double digits. Mm -hmm. If Preda or Heslop win, it'll be the first time in their career. And for those new to Red Bull Cliff Diving, wondering how it all works, no stress, we've got you. Here's a snapshot of the format. First off. Eight men, eight women. They're permanent divers in this 2022 season. Four wild card divers, those seeking to earn full-time positions, are added at every stop, which brings the total to 24 athletes. Okay, four rounds of diving, each of them being judged, and every dive counts. It's only three seconds to judge a diver's execution, which includes the takeoff from the dive point. Then it's the position in the air. And of course, that critical water entry. Got to get it right. Yeah, especially here at the final stop. Straightforward, five judges present a score between zero and 10. The low and the high scores are tossed out. The remaining three are multiplied by the degree of difficulty of the dive, which then equals the total score. So clearly the more flips and twists, the higher the degree of difficulty. You will hear Joey and I call it DD. At every World Series stop, four total dives make up the final score and points are awarded at each stop then those points are added together, which go towards the World Series standings. That's right. All the athletes chasing Cliff Diving's most prestigious accolade reserved for the winners of the overall title called the King Kai Gili Trophy. Trophy. Yeah, awarded in honor of the great Hawaiian chief who launched feet first from the massive Hawaiian lava cliffs without making a splash in the late 1700s. Rhiannon Iflin has enough points already, as we spoke about it earlier, entering Sydney to secure her sixth career King Kaakili Trophy, as we mentioned. And the men still yet to be decided. <laughs> that is going to be oh. an epic round. And again, we'll check out the men first. The judges, Anka Piper of Germany is here. Olivier Mono ricard and Jeff Arbin of Australia, along with Steve Foley, another Aussie here. Simon Latimer from close by in New Zealand. So the judges probably have the most difficult task today, deciding on the men's side who will be the winner and just keeping their composure on this boat, Joey, floating around. <laughs> <laughs> you can get seasick right there. Uh, beautiful weather, though. Sunny in Sydney, 20 degrees Celsius, 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Water temp, pretty chilly, 19 Celsius, 67 Fahrenheit. And the wind, a little bit calmer than yesterday in the yeah. first couple rounds. So that's kind of nice. And yeah. the seawater here in the Sydney Harbor, just a beautiful day. Yeah, it's a lot calmer. Yesterday, quite a bit of chop, high winds. The athletes found it quite difficult getting their dives off, but today, perfect. And three rounds of diving have already happened. So now coming into this fourth round is the lowest scores from the previous rounds that will go first. So in this case, Aussie Chris Bedner, he'll drop. James Lichtenstein from the United States, he'll drop in third. Jonathan Perez, who's won the King Kai Keeley Trophy before, is in sixth. Little note, Nikita Fedotov, who has a permanent diver spot on the hook. He's in that group right there. And then here are the top five, including Blake Aldridge. Yeah. Coming back, 40 years old, and Alexei Prigorov, and then here we go, the top three battling for the King Kai Keeley Trophy. It is Heslop who will drop in first, Preda second, and then Gary Hunt will dive last. That is exactly what you want to see coming to the fourth <laughs> and final round. But beautiful shot of the Harbor Bridge, one of the tallest and longest steel arch bridges in the world. And this is Chris Bedner's first event of his life on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series, only 21 years old, making his debut, not only that, on the biggest stage in cliff diving. Nerves? On home territory. Yeah. <laughs> Exciting. And he's already won the trophy for the best looking trunks. 
<laughs> resides here in Sydney. And Joey, what's the what's the strategy here in the first the first diver to go? You gotta throw down something big if you want to get up in the rankings. So fourth and final round is all about degree of difficulty. So trying to push the limits as hard as you can. So you can look at the description of the dive on the left hand side. Twenty seven meters, ninety feet above the water. And the local Bednar puts on a show, the young apprentice technician and car engineer who put that on hold because he wanted to launch off twenty seven meter ninety foot platforms into the Sydney Harbor. <laughs> Can you imagine that off. talking to the boss and saying, uh, Hey, yeah. I'm just going to take some time off. I'm going to go and jump off some cliffs. He said, say what? Hey, you guys, yeah, <laughs> set the tools aside. The stark contrast between those two. Great job, though, coming out in his first, uh, in his debut. Yeah. He's got a great tale of overcoming adversity as well. So, been diving for a long time. He has done some cliff diving in the past, but he had an injury whereby he had to have both knees operated on, one after another. Oof. Overcomes that last year and then decides to give cliff diving a go and went over to Park City in Utah and then also trained over in Europe to dive from 27 meters for the very first time and get a list together and he got a chance to show off his diving at one of the warm-ups in the competition. What an honor it is for Chris Bednar, first competition on home soil. So you see the two on the left, he'll drop those. It's the high and the low, the remaining three. So the last dive in yellow, 49-2-0. So he'll roll that up into a grand total because all four dives count. So 204-20 for Bednar. There you have it, pretty much the start list at this point. Hunt to dive last. And here is Carlos Jimeno of Spain, 32 years old, one of the divers that you know, loves the raw and pure form of the sport. Off the cliffs, grown up. Fourth in Paris this season, giving the permanent divers a little nudge. Unfortunately, Joey couldn't rack up enough, rack up enough points to uh, earn that permanent diver spot for 2023. What separates him? The arm stand dives. So cool to watch. Very, very unique dive. He's got to get the balance right. You can see him shaking. Steady as she goes. So Jimeno drills one into the Sydney Harbor. And that, Joey, is such a unique dive. Those new to this sport and just looking at how he took off inward like that is absolutely nuts. So an arm stand cut through, that was the old terminology. So arm stand reverse, it's crazy. You actually have to rock forwards and then you have to cut back into the platform. The only athlete performing Ooh. this dive crushing the Whoa. entry. So a beautiful rip entry. So what is a rip entry? That is when you cut through the water with no splash. It sounds like you're tearing cloth, tearing through the water. Great aerial awareness. And look at the speed picking up to 85 kilometers per hour. 10 G-forces worth of impact. Really exciting diver to watch. He's also part of the Perfect 10 Club, so we know he's capable of amazing scores. And it was so cool to watch him off the cliff face in Ireland with those tents, earning those tents. The judges were absolutely impressed. So we'll keep a bunch of eight and a halves. And then all four dives rolled up. They all count 354-60, so that'll set the pace here in the men's fourth round. Orlando Duque, the new sport director, the legend and pioneer of cliff diving. We're going to catch up with him and hear what he has to say about the season for the men thus far in 2022. These guys are the best we've ever seen, to be honest. The level we're watching right now, we couldn't even dream of that before. 
So it's no surprise that he's going to the last dive. I think it's going to be decided on the last round, on the last dive. And that's good. You know, that shows that the competition is developing in the right way. You know, when it gets to that, that point where there's three people fighting for the title, you know, where, where they're really going to have to do their best to be the winners of the Red Bull Fifth Diving World Series. So, I mean, it's exciting. It's exciting to, to see this. It's absolutely exciting. And it's so great to hear from Orlando. He's dove everywhere in the world. That I mean, he has. Yeah, even off everywhere. icebergs in Antarctica. <laughs> but not in front of the Opera House here in Sydney. This guy is not either. James Lichtenstein, the party spoiler. That made is. his debut this season, earned a third place podium finish, and only his second appearance on the World Series. So. He can't win the World Series. He can't get that permanent diver spot, but he might be able to, to determine who will if he gets in the top three and breaks up that. Kick this dive out. Five somersaults. And he needs eights on this. And I don't know, a little bit of a splash, Joey. Now let's bring it back into the basics of cliff diving. You have the safety divers down there doing their job, but the splash, again, compared to traditional diving. Everybody thinks that's the whole concept of diving. It's not. Yeah, it does impress anyway. the judges by having the rip entry with no splash, but it's still about the takeoff. Is the takeoff strong? Is the form in the air good? And is it vertical? But I also want to talk about a particular topic, and that is aerial awareness. Check this out. Back five somersaults. Watch his head here. He'll flick back once he sees the water. He'll flick back twice there. Watch his head flick back third time. Then the fourth time. So in total, making it five somersaults. Comes from a trampolining background. So his aerial awareness is absolutely supreme. And aerial awareness is key in this sport. If you get lost, yeah. you don't understand where you are, you're in trouble. And there's, a, there's a bunch of people watching right now. Doesn't he get dizzy? Yes, he does. <laughs> <laughs> I get dizzy watching it. <laughs> Moves in his second with 347.65. So not the score Lichtenstein was looking for, but nevertheless, what a season he's had coming on and making his de debut earlier on in Mostar. So here comes Miguel Garcia. 31 years old of Colombia. And after being part of the series since 2014 and 22 starts, he reached back to back career best finishes in the past two stops, placing sixth at both. So still improving for the 31 year old. He went quick. He needs eights. Will that do it in the judges' eyes? In with quad half by Miguel Garcia. And the sport of cliff diving. Visualization is imperative. So you see a lot of the divers visualizing their dives before they take off. You have to picture everything perfectly in the mind to help with the execution. And also preparation is key in this sport. So a lot of the divers spend a majority of the time on the lower platforms, 10 meters, it's not that low making sure they get the aerial awareness right. So the first part of the dive, the first 10 meters, is imperative. If something's gonna go wrong, it's usually at that particular point. So preparation is key in the sport of cliff diving. The more you prepare, that also helps calm the nerves and you feel more prepared standing on the platform. And let me tell you, when you're standing there and looking down, it's a completely different perspective. You see these tiny little scuba divers down below. So if you think these athletes have no fear, mm -mm -mm. every time they get up there, they respect the challenge at hand. Miguel Garcia, the stepfather of Maria Paula Quintero, who we're gonna see in the women's final round coming up shortly. 331 will be his grand total, putting him into third behind Jimeno and Lichtenstein. And a beautiful shot of the Sydney Opera House, one of the most well-known buildings in the world. And that doesn't phase this man right here, Aiden Heslop, who has a chance to win his first King Ka Keeley Trophy, two wins this season. And this is just a, a form of relaxation for these guys. He learned that from Gary Hunt, the juggling. It's also a mental warm-up, so you start concentrating mentally, some coordination. Actually, surgeons do that before 
major operations to stimulate the mind. What is stimulating is this competition heating up for the finale. Eight stops in total this season. All coming down to the wire. See the wind sock. The wind is working into the divers advantage right now. Not blowing too hard. A little swirly there. Maybe a bit of a side wind, tailwind type situation when they're on the platform. But next up, we have Nikita Fedotov and in Copenhagen. Man, putting one down, put him on the podium, and now he's in contention for a permanent diver position if he does well here in Sydney. Yeah, he's a real dark horse. When he's on fire, watch out for this man. Very, very unique set of skills. Forming dives that no one else is doing in the series currently. And with Popovich out because of injury, Fedotov has been closing the point gap. He's 68 points behind Popovich, who's ranked number four. So he'll need to place within the top six to have enough points to overtake fourth, which would secure a 2023 permanent diver spot. And in this dive, Joey, he needs sixes from the judges on average to pull into the number one spot. It's going to see that degree of difficulty, Tara, if you'll see it. And the divers to come starting to increase 5.1. And they, they can choose whatever dive in the fourth round, correct? That's right. But you need to declare what dive you're doing before the competition starts. So he'll jump up, move forward, and rotate back towards the platform. season puts it into the Sydney Harbor Joey you can break it down judges will he get into the top six that'll be determined under the divers to come but did he have enough juice did he have enough gas in the tank on this one for a big score I liked it it's interesting it's unique let's look at the takeoff here just a leg splitting apart a little bit at the beginning but his entry here doing a fantastic job. They usually go down about four to five meters. So if he did this dive rotating backwards, he had less degree of difficulty. So this is a reverse takeoff, facing forwards, moving away from the platform. That increases the degree of difficulty. So 5.1 in total, if he did the exact same skills but moving backwards, you only get 4.6. So he's trying to step up the degree of difficulty, but you got to get the scores combined with the DD, degree of difficulty. Yeah, and he's fifth to go of 11. So 114 on that is what I see in yellow. So then all four added together, 382.75. So good enough for first at the moment. A lot of top divers yet to drop. As we look at a beautiful shot of the Harbor Bridge. And Fedotov, 382. And you see it in the dark blue. Those are the divers who have not gone yet. Among them is Gary Hunt. Leading the series for the first time this season, coming into the final stop. Yeah. Some injuries have held him back last winter. He's been coming back slowly. But now, you know what? He's been sitting second, third place all season long. You poke the bear a little bit, <laughs> make him angry. <laughs> the calmest guy in the world. But when you do poke the bear, a tougher cat than Fredo. He comes it was, scratching. Yeah. Yeah. He's leading the majority of the season. And Jonathan Pereda is coming off a fifth place finish in Italy where. He was the number one qualifier after the second round. Gained some confidence there. 63rd start on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. One of four men ever to win the King Cock Healy Trophy. Just with this, you can't move into lead, only into second. So he needs 8.5s to get into the second place position. Johnny Perretta is the rip master, and that's exactly why they call him that. And if you haven't watched one of our 
Red Bull Cliff Diamond World Series events. He's been struggling this season because of some injuries last season. And I tell you what, Joey, he just needs to reset the button for next year. That he does. And that's what he's talking about doing. This year is really a good trial year to get, get the feeling back, get his confidence back. And again, clear the hard drive for the 2023 season is what he needs to do. They did a great job getting all of his dives back. It's not an easy task. So choosing to lower the degree of difficulty in the fourth and final round. So normally he would step it up and have higher degree of difficulty. So this is a front triple half. That's the pike position there. So there's different positions in the air. Tuck is when you're in the ball shape. Pike is when the legs are straight folded against the body. But the Barani, would, what we're watching right now is the last part of the dive. And all the athletes are landing feet first as opposed to head first. That's due to that incredibly strong impact. Great scores for Johnny Paredes there. So well into the nines from the judges. So 91-8 on that fourth and final dive. So 364-35. So Paredes in second. So Nikita Fedotov with that, still remaining the, in the top spot with his 382, will indeed, with the amount of divers left, place in the top six and earn a permanent diver spot for the 2023 season. So cool things are starting to unfold already as we get a look at Blake Aldridge, the 40-year-old. Oldest diver on the men's side out here. Now a wild card diver in this 2022 season. Come on! Told us he's feeling the stress and pressure of trying to earn a permanent spot for next season. He's not going to be able to do that here, but perhaps in some other competitions yet to be determined for the other four that will earn positions. Wow, look at this. And Blake Aldridge going quick and a big splash on that, but look at that. Arm stand dive, 40 years old, 27 meters, 90 feet above the Sydney Harbor. I, he usually comes up out of the water pretty fired up. This one, not the case. I'm always impressed by these arm stand dives. So the 27 meter tower is the equivalent of an eight story high rise. So if you want to gain some perspective on what that feels like, get on the high rise, take a look down, and then just do a handstand on the balcony while you're at it. He was an Olympic diver in 2008. Yep. What's the difference between this height and Olympic diving? Well, first of all, it's the impact. And once again, to reiterate, that's why they're landing feet first. So it's a huge adjustment. Also, Alexei Prigorov, an Olympian coming up as well. And he found that transition quite difficult. So in the Olympic Games, he was saying it's a little easier to concentrate. Yeah, big over twist at the bottom there. So you have to be square on from the judges. So there's an over twist that will be deduction for Blake Aldrich. Not quite the way he wanted to cap off the season. A lot of people ask the water depth. Five and a half meters. It's only about 18 feet deep, which amazes a lot of people. Typically, the standard is 16 feet. Can't, you know, 15 is pushing it. 16 is OK. Anything deeper than that. Perfect depth. All right, so Fedotov still in the top spot. There you have in the dark blue those who have not dove yet. So four to go. Prigorov, Heslop, Preda, and Hunt. <laughs> there is Katalin Preda. Look at the shape this guy is in. In contention for the King Kong Keeley Trophy. This is really a competition that's, it's, that's heating up and getting exciting. It's the most intense in the, in the, in the history in, in, in this, of the sport yeah. in a long time, a long Joey. Time. I mean, arguably the most intense of all time. This there, has, there has been some tight ones, but this one is off the charts. So here's Alexei Prigorov. Coming off the World Series, career best finish, earning fourth at the last stop in Polignano Omari, Italy. What does he need, Joey, to get into the top spot? So Alexei Prigorov needs sevens from the judges to move into the lead. The only Olympic medalist to compete on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. One bronze in Beijing 2008 in a three meter, three meter springboard synchro. Look at the degree of difficulty. It's ramping up 5.4. Is this a running takeoff? He'll run to the end of the platform. Prigoro 
off of Ukraine with the second highest degree of difficulty in this round. The crowd loves it here in Sydney. Lots of flipping, lots of spinning going on there for the 35 year old. Wow, what an action-packed dive from Alexei Prigorov. He came from the springboard diving background, just from three meters. And what an adjustment to head up to 90 feet or 27 meters. And actually taking off from the platform from a fixed surface, as opposed to a bouncing diving board, is incredibly challenging. Didn't he just spend some time eating all your food at your house? He did. Brisbane? Yeah, yeah, we had uh, Nikita, Alexei. Quite a lot of the cliff divers came up to the Gold Coast to get some pre-season training in or pre-competition training in to get over jet lag and so forth. And they had an absolute blast there. They definitely paid all of my food. They all your these food. athletes, they eat. You, you said they, <laughs> they, sat in your, they sat in your hot tub for like five straight days. <laughs> Good for them. And it's so cool you have a great relationship with these guys. So Prigorov, you see the high and the lower toss, the remaining three multiplied by the DD. So in the yellow, that's the last dive score, 83-7-0, 357-50. So Prigorov couldn't overtake Perez. So he's in third. Yes. A little bit of a hard hit on the landing for Alexei. All right, and here we go. The drama begins as we look at a beautiful skyline of downtown Sydney, the final stop of the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series 2022. And three men are in contention of the King Kai Keeley Trophy. So right there you see the points. It is Hunt, Heslop, and Preda. Look how close it is between Preda and Heslop. And only 34 points behind Gary Hunt is Aiden. So it is going to come down to this last dive. Aiden Heslop is 20. Catalan is 31. Gary Hunt is 38. Just to give you an idea of the age range the top three men. Now, Heslop, second overall in the World Series points right now. And I'd say he blew things up in Boston, winning the first top of the season. Turned a lot of heads, and everyone's wondering, well, you know, was that it? And then, nope, it's not over. This guy continued the momentum and kept things rolling, Joey, through the entire season. Taking the win in Sissicon as well. But now this youngster has the world's hardest dive ahead of him. Front four somersaults, three and a half twists, adding a whole nother twist from Alexei Prigodov. Look at that, hitting the Off top the of the DD chart, the degree of difficulty chart. It's, like it's in maroon, it's not even red. But to move into lead, he needs sixes, and he wants a lot more than that. He's looking for nines on this dive or eights. So Heslop puts one down, and we'll see if that is good enough to win the King Kong Healy Trophy. You have to be perfect. You know Gary Hunt is coming up, and you know what he has in, like you mentioned earlier, the toolkit. The fate of Aiden Heslop is in the hands of the judges, and also Catalan Preda and Gary Hunt to come. What an incredible battle has been between these three men. Hayden Heslop running forward, maximum power, three twists at the beginning, digging deep. That's where you have to use those abdominal muscles to keep the dive moving. Pretty good entry, maybe just a slight over rotation. Wow. This is a thrilling competition and one of the most dynamic athletes. He's twists so quickly in real time that that twist is like zipping along. So powerful, only 20 years of age. Imagine what he'll achieve with a little more time. I'm just sitting here nervous. I just want to see the judges' scores. Uh, Come on. Somebody please, somebody <laughs> please call the Sydney police because Heslop keeps breaking the laws of gravity. He'll keep a bunch of eights on that and will easily move into first with 434-60. Now that is higher than his average score on that particular dive for the 2022 season. So that was a good job by Heslop to put pressure on these two men. Oof. It is coming down to the wire. For some athletes, like in golf, the title is determined by a 27-meter putt, and some, in this case, determined by a 27-meter descent into the Sydney Harbor. So two divers left. Catlin Peretta, we'll see what he has up his sleeve, the 31-year-old Romanian. 
And again, one of only three men in contention for the King Kai Keeley Trophy. Some highlights of earlier this season, just lighting it up. Most consistent diver the entire season. Absolutely. And stylish. I mean, his form is impeccable. Crushing the entry in Paris in front of the Eiffel Tower. Yeah. Emotion and appreciation from the other athletes. Konstantin Popovich on the screen there as well, out injured for the season. He has placed no worse than fourth this season, and if he wins today, he will win the series, but only if Gary Hunt doesn't play second. So Catalan Predators average score this year, and this dive is 139.45. Scores from the judges. Man, this is huge. Oof. He's got to get nine and a halves. Nine and Nines a half. and nine and a halves from the judges. 5.1 DD. Aiden's DD was much higher, so it's all about execution now for Catalan Predator. That's an understatement. Perfectly piercing into the water. Not a drop left behind by Catalan Ferretta. And as you mentioned, Joey, execution, execution, execution. And that's what the this judges... going to get him. Yeah, that's what the judges look at, look at. They don't judge the degree of difficulty. He had a superb entry. Beautiful twist. Impeccable pike position. Looking at the entry, you can see he was a little short of vertical, so the little bit of the chest leaning forward, but they have to look at the takeoff, right? Is it powerful? Yes, it is. Little split of the legs, but only slight. Pike is nice and tight. The judges love to see that. That's the straight legs folded against the body. He's looking at the water, trying to make those final adjustments at those incredible speeds for this incredible competition and showdown Woo. in Sydney for the finale. Hey, oh. Oh. He'll keep it eight and a half. I believe a pair of nines on this one. Hard to see those cards with the judges floating around. And indeed he does, 135.15. I don't think that'll cut it. It's in second, 429.95. So Katzlin Freda, who's had the biggest season of his career, will not get the King Kong Keeley Trophy. And Aiden Heslop guaranteed second place for the season, but now he awaits his idol, Gary Hunt. His girlfriend, Molly Carlson, I mean, we will see her dive in the women's competition coming up. So what do we have brewing here in the situation with Gary Hunt, who's going for King Kaakili Trophy number 10, and Hesla is so nervous right now. All he can do is just sit there and wait. He's done everything he can. He's just got to see how this unfolds. But, ladies and gents, Gary Hunt is coming up. So there's Gary. And for those new to the sport, this is the guy that's like Kelly Slater of surfing, Michael Phelps of swimming, Tom Brady of football, to give you an idea if you don't know Gary Hunt. And he was trailing in the points all season long. Then he kicked it into gear turbocharged it, moved forward, found his groove and momentum, and now leading, coming into the last stop after that win in Pognano Amare, Italy, just a few weeks ago. So here we go in a typical Gary Hunt situation. Going for another King Kong Healy trophy. This time, Joey Zuber, number 10. <laughs> Could be double digits, so the scores he needs from the judges will be nines, right? And he has scored nines on this dive plenty of times before. A little under average this year. About 120 points in total for the average score this season. Aiden Heslop just waits to see if he will win the King Kong Keeley Trophy. It's determined on this final dive by Gary Hunt.
understanding and knowing he's watched Gary Hunt for so many years. And I have a weird feeling that young Aiden Heslop knows exactly what just happened. But we will see what the judges say on this. Is it better than Heslop's score of 458-15 or 434 4 and we said the advantage with Gary Hunt is his ability to handle pressure. The last man on the platform, it came down to this moment and the execution for the entry was outstanding. Beautiful takeoff, smooth twist. I mean, there's a reason why he is the greatest of all time. He is a cliff diving genius, has competed in every single World Series stop has never let an injury get the better of him. 91 competitions to be exact, Joey, and he is as red hot as his swim trunks. Will it be double digits for Gary Hunt? And ladies and gentlemen, four tens and one nine and a half, the legend of the Gary Hunt Express keeps charging along. Full steam ahead. Gary puts a cherry on top at the very last stop. Double digits, number 10 for Gary Hunt. He wins it here in Sydney. His 10th King Kawakili Trophy. And hats off to Aiden Heslop, the youngster, for putting pressure on the veteran. Oh, sensational performance. As you said, double digits for Gary Hunt. Now that wow. is nothing short oh. of incredible. in Sydney. It's the first time the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. Sabine, his fiance. And that'll do it. Gary Hunt. <laughs> what a comeback through the entire season. He will win it here in Sydney, Australia and lock in his 10th King Kaakili Trophy. And Aiden Heslop, you have to give this kid credit. Second place along with Katlin Pereta, who put pressure on Gary Hunt the entire season. It wasn't easy for the French diver to earn his 10th World Series title. Unbelievable. And a great job by all the men here at the final stop of the season. The women coming up now. And we'll head down to David O'Queeve. Dave O.C. is with the winner, Gary Hunt. Dave. Thank you, guys. I feel like I'm in the presence of a legend here, Gary Hunt. You just did it again. How are you? Oh, I'm over the moon. It's uh, such a, an emotional thing. Like every year, this uh, this gets harder and harder. I feel my age every time. Like some of those impacts are, are struggling, but um, yeah, to, to manage to, to pull it out when it counts, it's, uh, it's special. Is it getting harder year on year? Not only with your age, but also with other competitors. Of course, it was tough for me this season. Like starting off with the same dives, seeing the young guns coming with massive dives. I was kind of in their shadow for a few competitions, but it's nice to be in the sunshine. And what about you now going forward? What's going to change into next year? How's diving going to progress for you? Um, as I said before, like me and the new dives, it's kind of, uh, it's not really going to be my, my thing anymore. My my goal is to, is to dive as well as I can, and everyone else has to take those risks to try and beat that bar. You truly are a legend. Congratulations. Enjoy every moment of it. Outstanding performance, thank you, Dave and Gary Hunt. So calm. He is psyched. He wanted this one.
As he said, he was in the shadow of the other athletes with that massive degree of difficulty. Now in the sunshine here in Sydney Harbour in front of the Opera House, a moment he'll never forget. Young Aiden Hessler, but don't worry, your time will come. Yeah. Just 20 years of age, he's got plenty of time ahead of him. With Gary Hunt, Wowza. An appreciation from Rihanna Nifland, who we'll see coming up shortly, who's won the World Series trophy already, the King Kai Kili trophy. Gary Hunt, 46 career victories, 77 podiums. And it all began with the first round. You got to be consistent because all four dives count, Joey. Doug, four dives, round one that we just saw is the simple and graceful dive, required dive round. Love watching those ones. <laughs> In this round, round two, the intermediate dive, scoring two tens from the judges. Hasn't scored under nines in this round the entire season. So he puts a lot of pressure on Aiden and Catalan in those first three rounds. Round three, triple twist at the beginning, Grani at the end, beautiful entry, and consistent Mr. and brilliant. Mr. Ten. And now 10 King Kakili trophies. He's a cliff diving genius, an acrobatic genius, and also an absolute gentleman. If you meet him and talk to him, a smart guy, humble, generous, gracious, friendly. Absolutely. What an ambassador for the sport, Gary Hunt. And keep an eye out for him. He is trying to qualify for the Summer Olympics, which will be held in Paris in 2024, competing in the 10 meter synchro event. So Gary Hunt, there you have it. Tenth time he's won the King Kong Keeley Trophy and the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. Heslop in second, Freda in third, and Nikita Fedotov, how about that? Moving into fourth because he had enough points and now earning that permanent diver spot. Only four men and four women after this final stop will get automatic invites to next season. Great job to all the gents. Beautiful shot. There was a human being falling from space. Speeds that no human being has fallen before. Faster than the speed of a bullet. This is going to be a place of history. We are go for launch. Status? Going all the way up to the stratosphere and skydive back to Earth while the whole world is watching. The speed at which we were gaining users to this live stream was like nothing any of us had ever seen before. It became the most viewed live event on YouTube. I wanted to be the first human outside of an aircraft breaking the sound barrier. What Felix did is a once in a lifetime achievement. But it's also a once in history achievement. Trace Worthington here back with you along with Joey Zuber at the final stop, number eight in the season finale of the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series from Sydney, Australia. Hey, there's your crew right there yeah, from man. High Diving Australia. Yeah, people. Everyone having fun in the boat, no doubt. Beautiful day. It's fun to see all the youngsters out here, Joey, all the divers, the future divers coming out to watch the best cliff divers in the world gaining experience. So congrats to the new organization. Yep. And look forward to seeing some of the youngsters in the future on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. Right, we've got to produce more Rihanna Nifflands and yep. more <laughs> supreme athletes. Not an easy task, but... We That's will do it. True. All right. So the series standings right now, it's Rhiannon Ifland. Uh, just, you know, ob obviously crushing it. She has enough points to wrap up the season. You have Molly Carlson, who's already locked in second. A big year for the Canadian. And in terms of continued drama, there's a lot going on between three divers that include Macaulay, Smart, and Panizzi. All three can move around in the results and not only have a chance at the top three series finish, but earning a permanent diver spot for the 2023 season. Only fitting we focus on Rihanna Nifflin. Let's learn more about the series champ.
My name is Rhiannon Ifland and I come from Australia. Welcome down under. It's obviously a huge pleasure for me to be diving with everyone in, in my hometown. It's a special weekend for me. I guess I'm gonna call it the pinnacle of, of my career. 2022 was a tough season. It was a lot of events, kind of a, a roller coaster emotionally, trying to hold it all together. Brandon Ifland locks in the King Kai Keeley Trophy for the 2022 season. I feel like I had never experienced tears of joy before that event. I felt an immense amount of pressure going in there and I think I just really wanted to wrap it up. The top spot on the podium is uh, obviously everybody's goal. Everybody wants that, including myself. The main goal for me is just to try and enjoy this event and bring the series home. <laughs> It'll be fun to see Rihanna Nifland getting her sixth King Kai Keeley trophy, but it will also be interesting to see what goes down in the competition. These folks get to see her live, and like the men, three rounds of diving have concluded. Joey, let's take a look at the highlights on how things went down for the women before the fourth and final dive. Molly Carlson having a good one. Yeah, Molly Carlson turning up the heat after round one with straight nines from the judges, proving she's a main contender for the series. Offers. Rihanna Nifland, a question, what have you got for us? And folks, it's all about the answer from Rihanna Nifland for the next dive. All smiles from Molly Carlson. And the answer from Rhiannon is a 10 from one of the judges. Just superb diving. I love this inward triple half. It's one of her most consistent dives. Comes from the trampolining background as well as elite diving, making her the most formidable cliff diving athlete on the planet, and that is why she'll hold the King Kai Achilles Trophy here today. After the competition, Ellie Smart impressing the crowds with the back arm stand. And also what's impressive is watch the disappearing act here, slicing her way through the water in the Sydney Harbour in front of the Opera House. She was pumped after that dive. Third currently. So a great women's competition on tap, as you see the famous Sydney Opera House in the background. The start list will kick it off with Ida Schmidt-Bauer. She has the lowest score after three rounds of diving. You have Maley Carpenter diving number six. She's had a wonderful season and has earned a position after a couple third place finishes for the rest of the season. And there you have it, Adriana Jimenez. Keep an eye on her. Number eight, it's the last competition of her career. Then you get down to the top three. Ellie Smart, Molly Carlson, and Rihanna Nifflin, just like the men. Yeah, <laughs> it's, just know, be, man. it's crazy. <laughs> pretty crazy top three there. And again, a nice shot of the Harbor Bridge, built in the 1930s. And Irish Schmidbauer, 27 years old of Germany, currently ninth on the World Series points. She has room to bump as high as seventh for the season, but would need a top four finish and rely on a couple others to not have a great showing today. But her last dive did not put her in a good position. No, it didn't. A little balk on the arm stand, but check out the degree of difficulty. 4.5 is the maximum. She's at 4.3. Back triple somersault with two twists. I always think it's inter interesting how she didn't come from, from a professional diving background. It's not easy if you don't come from that. That shows you the talent that she has to be able to learn these skills. It's been some. Like Chris Bedner on the men's side, too. It's just, I mean, acrobatic skills, right? Like, anybody can do this. Watching Iris Smidbauer guiding the scuba divers in the water into the right position. They're, for, they're there for safety. Schmidbauer kicks things off in the women's fourth and final rounds. Here at the eighth and final stop. Beautiful in the air. Bit of a, what you call a heavy landing, but nevertheless, good composure, regaining it from her third round dive, where she came back down from her arm stand. 
With the fourth and final round, it's all about degree of difficulty, so power is important. So a lot of the athletes spend a great deal of time working on their strength and also their speed. So strength plus speed equals power. You do a lot of heavy weights, also a lot of box jumps, explosive power training, and also abdominal muscles. They do a lot of standing somersaults, front somersaults, back somersaults, to help develop that fast twitch movements. So some athletes are actually born with a slower twitch and fast twitch. So it was all about power on that dive. So commendable, performing one of the world's hardest dives by Irish Midbow. Their accolades this past <laughs> few months include winning the US High Diving Challenge. She had a thumbs up there along with another thumbs up with her victory at the European Championships. Not happy with her performance here at the final stop. Jessica McCauley next from Montreal, Canada. Three third place finishes in 2022 and currently hold down, holds down third in the overall World Series points. So here are a few highlights, look at that. Drop it in, Copenhagen, then Mostar into the Noretva River, doing a beautiful job there, Joey. And a beautiful diver she is, incredibly graceful, tallest female cliff diver on the circuit at the moment. Spent a lot of time on that podium. And here she is. A lot of pressure, though, on this. For Jess, Ellie Smart and Xanthia Panisi are hot on her heels. That being said, she'll need to protect herself from dropping to fifth in the standings, which is possible with the point she has coming into this fourth round. And Ellie Smart and Xanthia coming up shortly. Entry into the Sydney Harbor goes Jessica McCauley, who this year, looking at this last and final dive, the most important of the season for her. Talk about style and elegance. I just love watching her dive. Very, very, very graceful. Nice takeoff. Perfect pike position. The pike position is where you have the leg straight, folded against the body. Now, the impact can vary at various locations. So sometimes they're diving into salt water, like we have here, sometimes into fresh water. Particularly hard in places like Sisukon, cold water, fresh water. Sometimes it's a hard impact. Sometimes you'll hear the divers say, whoa, that rattled me. Generally speaking, I found it a lot softer diving into warm ocean water. Good scores for Jessica McCauley. Remember, the five judges, high and the low scores are tossed out. Those are faded, as you'll see in a second. The remaining three, in this case, eight and a half, two eights, multiply by the degree of difficulty. So in yellow is a 98. That's her third round dive score. And after all four added together, 284, 204, McCauley. And now she awaits to see what Ellie Smart and Xanthia Panisi have to say. As we look at, once again, Orlando Duque, our Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series Sport Director. And here's what he had to say so far about the women's 2022 season. In the women's competition, I mean, it's, it really surprised me. We know Rhiannon can do it, but she's been under a lot of pressure from Molly. You know, Molly is stepping up her game big time, and she's a very strong diver. She's a high-quality diver. But Rihanna managed to keep her head cool, still perform under pressure. It shows a level of maturity. But I also like that there is this young divers like Elisa Cosetti. They're getting in there, they're getting comfortable, and that's good, you know, that's really good because uh, they're gonna be the future. Good stuff from Orlando and Lisa Cassetti, who he is talking about, has come onto the scene nicely this season. She will dive next, the youngster out of Italy who is gaining some serious experience. 
Sydney is her fourth invite of this season of the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. She had one experience at an event last year in Italy. So this only her fifth ever start. The Italians put together a good crew, Joey, newcomers this season, assisted by Alessandro De Rose and his wife. Strong program over there. Yep. Speak about that shortly. All right, she needs nine and a halfs to pull into the top spot over Macaulay. Lisa Cassetti checking all the boxes on that one. Great job. How about that entry, huh, by Alyssa Cassetti? Tell us about Alessandro Rose, his wife, doing a great job building that Italian diving program, the high diving program, and cliff diving program. So Nicole is coaching her and the future generation of cliff divers. An integral part of the training is learning how to do the Barani. What is a Barani? It's the final stage of the dive there. You see her looking at the water, and then it's a front somersault with a half twist, so you can keep your eye on the water the entire time. So what they're doing with their training is spending at least one session per week with a trampoline coach. Watch how she lays her arms by the side here, by the body. That's a typical trampoline style. Arms lay flat, close to the legs and close to the body, so you can see the style. So Alessandro De Rose dives in the same way. So it's a signature move or signature style that they're using with the Italian team. So keep a bunch of eights. Decent score of 81. So Cassetti moves into second with 273-60. The former basketball player before getting into cliff diving. Great job. And as I've said in the past broadcasts, we'll see her around. Remember that name. Yeah, doing a fine job with her. Beautiful shots. Stop number eight. And a great shot of this beautiful area. The platform built on the grounds of the Royal Botanic Gardens, close to the Sydney Opera House. As you see Macaulay leading the way, those in dark blue have not dove yet. Cassetti, three to go of 12. The final diver will be Rihanna Niflin, going number 12. Antonita Vishavanova. We saw Nikita Fedotov have a great competition in earning his position for next year. He's married to Antonina. Her father, Oleg, competed in the first year of the World Series back in 2009. Is she doing the arm stand on this one again? That she is. A lot of heavy strapping on her shoulder. Obviously some signs of wear and tear. Eight competitions in total this season. That's hard on the body. Needs eight and a half to pull into first. Vanova is the only woman to do the arm stand dive in this fourth and final round. And what a way to impress the judges and also the rowdy crowd here in Sydney, Australia. How scary is that, Joey? I mean, the women's platform is 21 meters, 70 feet off the water, and you're an <laughs> arm stand dive. And then hurtling your way to reach speeds of 70. Well, she disappeared on that one. Yeah. Superb. Spending a lot of time training in Canada, in Montreal. They've got an incredible indoor training facility. Range of different heights, 15 meters. Look at this. 17 and 20. Wow. Whew. Great stuff. So that's really key for the development of the sport, having these indoor training facilities. Scuba divers there to help with the safety and also splashing the surface to help the athletes see the surface of the water to adjust for the landing. Wow. Whoa. Keeps a bunch of nines after the high and the lower toss. So Visha Vanova is happy with this one. 293.85 and will take over the top spot. It's exactly what she needed, knowing the cream of the crop divers are on tap. 
right now she's unbelievable the, the dad's here as well actually all like he'll be happy with that one and here comes the experienced one yana netziaraba 30 years old in her 31st career start on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. She's currently eighth in the overall standings. She was seventh heading into the last stop. Then Addy Jimenez returned to the scene, pushing her back a notch. Three point nine degree of difficulty needs eight and a half. Putting that one down and a little bit short or a lot short on that, Joey. And the big question for anybody new watching this, how bad does that hurt? So in the sport of cliff diving, everything comes down to split second adjustments. But I need to look at the replay to understand what happened towards the end of the dive. Sometimes it can stem from the takeoff. It may be too slow or too fast. Uh, but she's doing the running takeoff to generate rotation. Twist at the beginning, pike. Let's have a look here. Looks like she maybe she came out a bit early. Yeah, Ooh. so she realized she was running out of room. A big, deep pike to try and pick up speed. And let me tell you, that hurts. I mean, it's it, not easy. It, those who have grown up swimming and going off diving boards, Joey, the smallest of diving boards that are only like a meter or so, and you land on your back and you land on your stomach, and you know how that stinks. Yeah. Imagine it from this height of 70 feet, 21 meters. Yeah, she just ran out of room on the dive, and I think that stemmed from coming out of the dive too early, opening too early, increasing the radius to slow everything down. First, first question, whenever I'm with you amongst a group of people, they always ask, you know, does it hurt? Yes, you're coming on your stomach. What do you, you think? You, 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 do these guys ever crash? And, like, they absolutely yeah. do. This is the best of the best of the business, but yet they do have. They are human. And 231.65, so see she's moving around a little bit. And getting ready for her last competition is Adriana Jimenez. Looking forward to seeing her. The 37 year old from Mexico announcing this last stop here in Sydney is the final one of her career. And after 36 career starts. So we'll see her shortly. Beautiful skyline of downtown Sydney, Australia, hosting the final stop of the season. And one of three new locations for the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. Paris and Oslo were the two others in 2022. And here comes Meili Carpenter. Sure. Wild card diver pulled off a pair of third place finishes this season. Ramping it up here, look to the left. Three somersaults, two twists. meters 70 feet above the Sydney Harbor the wild card diver has come on strong this season after that third place finish in Boston at the season opener, they were like hey come on the rest of the tour you've got the goods yeah let's talk about the depth of the field currently I mean these divers entering the series with high degree of difficulty the execution is improving year by year the yeah. competition is getting fierce now and that third place finish what a way to start off the season and a great dive to cap off 2022 Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. Comes from a show diving background. The House of Dancing Water in Macau. The diving indoors, diving outdoors. Adaptability is key in this sport. So they have to adapt to different lighting conditions. Sometimes you turn up to competitions. There's waves, there's wind. But today it's flat and calm. Pretty good scores for Maylie Carpenter. The judge is still calm, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> well, yesterday it was not yeah, so calm. No, they had to get off the boat. Yeah. And judge from the sidelines, the thing was a rocking. So Maylie Carpenter will keep three seven and a half after tossing out the high and the low. And what will that do for her? Put her into first. She breaks that 300 point mark. And she's six to go of 12. 
Great job by the former NCAA Division I college coach and science teacher in Maria Paula Quintero. In her 21st career World Series start from the same area as that man, Orlando Duque from Cali, Colombia. Saw her stepfather, Miguel Garcia, competing earlier. He coaches her. Slow season for her, not normal. Trying to pick up the pace here at the final stop and end on a good note. Quintero with a lot of flips going on there. Great degree of difficulty. Bailey Carpenter looking on, who we just watched. Now, Maria Paola Quintero, incidentally, was the first woman in the world to perform this dive. Front quad half. That means front four somersaults with a half twist. So pretty impressive to perform that many somersaults from a 21-meter platform. Now, it's pretty interesting. A lot of the divers have to really make sure they drive the legs. You can see her hands holding onto that tuck position. So always before the dive, you'll see them use a chamois to dry the legs. So watch here, she'll throw forwards, and there's a lot of rotational inertia here. The arms throw forwards, and the hands will grab onto the shins. If your shins are wet or slippery, you don't want to wear sunscreen on your legs, trust me. You'll slip out of the dive, so you need that grip-like surface on your legs, because the arms really want to pull off as you're rotating that fast. Slide over rotation for Maria Paolo Quintero, but nonetheless impressive to perform that many somersaults. Now her diving last season, very similar. It put her in a good position overall, but the depth and the progression for the women coming into this season has changed quite a bit. So she's dropped a little bit when you compare it to last year. So she'll have to regroup and figure that out over the next several months before we start the World Series next summer. This is stop number eight from Sydney, Australia. The final stop of the season. Thousands have come out to watch as this is the first time the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series has come to this beautiful city. The Opera House is the background and Adriana Jimenez just announced that this will be the last event of her successful and illustrious career on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. No question, part of the fabric that has made this World Series a success, Joey. 36 World Cup starts, second most by any female in history. 11 podiums, three wins. One of the OGs and one of the more respected divers that has represented the sport over the many years, and more importantly, one of the kindest and sweetest divers you'll encounter. Oh, that is. She's a real cutie. One of only six women to win the cliff diving title. A lot of emotion. A lot of emotion. One of six women ever to win a Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series individual event. This has to be emotional for you, Joey, too. You watched her for years on this World Series, and you know the impact that she's made. 2014, starting off in Texas. Also dove in front of her home country in Yucatan, Mexico. If they had jerseys, they'd be hanging it up in the rafters right now and retiring it. They say, what do they say in Australia? Good on you? Is that what they? Good, good on you, good, mate. Good, good on you, mate. All right. 
Although it's that's an the, end. That's the only yeah. accent I'm going to give you the whole <laughs> Look, although it's an end to her career, her legacy and what she's done for the sport will live on by inspiring the next generation of athletes. It's been a career filled with travel, adventure, trials and triumphs. And she'll never forget the experiences she's had with the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. What an incredible athlete, inspiring, as I said before, many athletes to come. She's still going to stay involved in the sport. Absolutely. Very lucky for the sport of high diving and cliff diving to have Addy Jimenez continue to be a part of it. So she's part of the team in Mexico, Mexico to help develop and coach the up and coming athletes. We salute you, Adriana Jimenez. She pulled into the lead, by the way, 3-11-9-5. Oh, Blakey. Oh, he's a charmer. <laughs> Very good friends, Adriana Jimenez and Blake Aldridge. Both have had so much success in so many years and shared so many times and moments together in and throughout the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. Business back here with Rhiannon Ifland, the Australian who has already had enough points coming into Sydney to win her sixth King Ta Keeley trophy. But look at her, it's still still focused. She wants to win in front of friends, family, and country mates. She will dive last. Four to go in the women's competition. And a lot on the line for this woman. Zantia Panisi, the youngster out of Brisbane, Australia. And the first time that she's competed in her home country. So a special moment for her. Great season. Hit the podium twice, a second and a third. She's still in fifth overall in the World Series points. Only two points behind Ellie Smart and only 56 points behind Jessica McCauley, who's in third place right now. So if she puts one down, Joey. She could be looking at that permanent diver spot, and possibly moving into the top three. So to take the lead, she'll need greater than sixes from the judges. She's been diving very well this season, two podiums. And she crushed the entry. Passionate coach in Brisbane and a passionate diver. Beautiful pipe position, digging deep, making the final adjustments in front of the home crowd. And we should be proud. Wow, wow, wow. An amazing finish disappearing. So with Jessica McCauley 
in fifth right now. And Panizzi with an 89-3 on that last one. All four scores together, 333-30. So based on the math, that should actually be enough points to move ahead of Jessica McCollin. So what stands in their way, Ellie Smart coming up shortly. Australia boat there. Australian Olympic Committee on board as well. Here to watch this incredible discipline. I'm sure they're thrilled by everything they're seeing today. Trying to get this into the Olympic Games. Of course, Brisbane hosting the 2032 Summer Olympic Games, and that is the hometown of that one right there. Santhia Panisi. So everyone getting a taste of what could be an Olympic sport. Ellie Smart now ready to drop. Three left in the women's competition. Back and forth in points all season long between Ellie and her good friend Jessica McCauley. But now Xanthia Panisi is thrown in the mix. She's also a good friend with them. Sitting fourth overall in the world standings. 54 points behind Jessica McCauley. And she said no matter the result, she's had the best season to date in terms of diving quality. She has been very happy with her results. So, Eleanor Smart, back two somersaults, three twists. It's always too impressive to see these twisting dives. She wants to head it. Move ahead of Panissi, it's eights from the judges. So Ellie Smart <laughs> answers on this. And now it is a battle between Panisi and Smart. And we talk about the permanent diver position, Joey. And if you just joined the broadcast, four athletes after this stop, the top four in the points will automatically be invited to the 2023 season. So yeah. to have that under your belt, you can relax and chill a little bit. The others, the four other remaining per gender that round out the top eight permanent divers, will have to go to other events yet to be decided to qualify for next season. Yeah, and you certainly want to take the pressure off yourself by making sure in the top four, Eleanor Smart Whoa. said earlier, having the season of her life came in focus and determined. And the backdrop of the Sydney Opera House, what a perfect way to round off the season. And rounding off the dive with the Barani and her entries this season, superb indeed. Judges holding up the cards. They need some bigger ones, Joey. <laughs> we need to get do. some bigger cards. We're going to work on that for next year. Once again, the high and the low toss. Eight and a half, eight and a half, seven and a half, 93 on that final dive. All four together. 339 10. So Ellie Smart now moves into the lead over Panizzi and far ahead of Jessica McCauley. So that should push Ellie Smart, even with two remaining, into that third place position overall for the season. Guaranteed podium. How happy is she today? So much emotion. So much to deal with in the cliff diving series. So many emotions. So with that, Smart will be third at worst and have enough points after McCauley drops down, depending on Molly Carlson and Rhiannon Iflin. And Ellie Smart will get the automatic invite to next season. But more importantly, ending the series in the top three. Two more divers to come. Molly Carlson. After the remarkable season thus far, 
Carlson, who started cliff diving only two years ago, has officially solidified herself as a proven contender and one of the most consistent divers, male or female, to step into the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series arena. What a season so far, Joey, the real deal. That she is. She's brought so much excitement and raised the bar of competition. And has definitely challenged Rihanna Nifland this season. Molly Carlson. Big dive here. A running takeoff front. Four somersaults with a half twist. Look at the DD 4.4, almost at the maximum. Whew. Needs greater than sevens to move into the lead. She wink. Oh, wink oh, so no! graceful. Huge degree of difficulty. And Molly Carlson drills it here in Sydney. And putting huge pressure on Rihanna Nifflin in her home country. So Carlson, the Canadian, beautiful dive. Risk versus reward. You throw down the big DD dives, but it makes it harder to hit the entry. But if you don't roll the dice, you're not in the game. And wow, running forward, throwing as hard as you can. There's a beautiful pike, two, three, spotting the water, looking there, and bang. Drawing it down. And her style, her technique is superb. Powerful diver. She's a track athlete. But she's got that really strong takeoff. She's only learnt this dive. She debuted it in Sissicon. So it takes some time to dial it in. Sometimes she's rotating too fast and too slow. But this time she Whoa. got it. She's got a 10 by the Canadian judge, Olivier <laughs> Morneau Ricard on the right hand side. And she will drop that. Remember the high and the lower toss. So the 10 is out, the 9 is out. She'll keep one and two nine and a halves <laughs> for a wow. 377 0. Wow. So putting some huge pressure. The throwdown showdown between Molly Carlson and Rihanna Nifland continues. She wasn't far off Rihanna Nifland's record competition score as well. One more diver to come the Australian Rihanna Nifland. Final dive the season coming up as Molly Carlson guaranteed a podium along with Ellie Smart. Zantia Panisi with her score puts her in a permanent diver spot for the 2023 season. She will end up fourth no matter what. So listen to the fans, the crowd. See the reshirts there? <laughs> some, wow. Some of the young fans, young divers coming out, the awesome Aussie diving sensation. And the wonder from down under with a giant season. After a second place finish to Molly Carlson in Boston, it was no slowing down after that. All wins. I mean, she just nails her entry time after time. It is just sensational. Very often, not often you see an athlete of this caliber in any discipline, a raw talent. 34 podiums out of 36 starts, 29 wins out of 36 starts. And Rhiannon Nifflin, take it all in. The 2022 King Ka Keeley Trophy winner. Okay, let's get this into context. She needs eight from the judges. Her highest degree of difficulty dive for the final round, for the finale of the season. You saw my notes. I saw it. <laughs> the, the unstoppable force of cliff diving, Rhiannon Iflin, caps off the season that she already won with a potential victory here in front of 10,000 fans in her home country of Australia. Re is reaping the rewards today with spectacular diving. She has got to be proud and happy with that dive. Wow, wow, wow. This is the best competition, the best season yeah. I've seen.
brand of Ifland, as advertised, presents another showcase. It'll be a big after party tonight. Break it down, Joey. Break it down. Nothing short of remarkable, incredible, graceful, dynamic, and brilliant. She's managed to handle that pressure from Molly Carlson, and she'll tell you it hasn't been easy. She makes it look easy, but it is not. There's a lot of nerves, there's a lot of mental stress. You have to deal with your own mind standing on that 21-meter platform. Huge scores from the judges for Rihanna Nifland. One of them's a 10. That's it. That is it. Just stop. <laughs> no, don't stop. Keep you it know, going. I know, Keep I'm it saying, going. In general. Just, <laughs> it's just absolutely amazing. Rihanna Nifland will win it here on the home turf. And cap off the season. 30th win, folks. And her debut competition in 2016 was as a wild card and winning it. And she's gone on to be the most decorated cliff diving athlete of all time. It'll be many, many, many years until anyone breaks the records that she has. She's the complete package. Strong mentally, even, strong even, physically. Even Johnny's wearing her shirt. Yeah. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? Rihanna Nifflin continues to validate herself as the GOAT of Red Bull Cliff Diving. So that'll do it for Rihanna Nifflin. Winning again, capping off a wonderful season, winning her sixth King Kai Keeley Trophy. She's never been out of the top five in 36 events competed, now 37. And FYI, she's only been in fifth place once and fourth place once in all of them. The rest, the top three. And Rihanna Nifflin, Beautiful event. She's with Dave O.C. Re, you've done it time and time again. You're no stranger to a King Kai Killy Trophy, and you're certainly no stranger to a win. But here in front of 12,000 Australians, is it more special? Yeah, it's uh, it's most definitely more special. Uh, I mean, you know, I was feeling quite nervous this morning, and as soon as I stepped onto the platform and felt the energy from all the Aussies uh, and all the support, it's, it was it was just an incredible feeling and I've been anticipating that for the whole season. So, yeah, I just can't believe it. Tell us, and be real, how do you do it? We watched Molly have an incredible dive. I don't know how you prevailed, but still you did. What? How do you do that? Yeah, look, I, to be honest, I have no idea. But, I mean, I've learned to deal with the pressure and I've, I've learned to, in a way, love it. And, uh, you know, it's really cool to see Molly put that dive down finally for nines. And, and I saw that and I think it was driving me and I was excited for her, you know, because at the end of the day, like, I just wanted to come out here and enjoy it as much as possible. And maybe that's that's the reason that, that I was able to handle that, handle that pressure. And at this point, you've achieved so much in your career. What makes you tick? How do you keep moving forward? Yeah, um, look, I've, I've already decided um, that next year I, I'm going to step back and reassess how I'm going to approach the next season. And, you know, I think I, I'm going to have to find a, a few new ways to spice it up. And I have some, some dive ideas that I want to play around with. And maybe, you know, like there's one idea in my head is to try a different dive at each event. Um, you know, just, just to do something to, to keep motivating me. But, you know, all the, all the girls are, are coming through strong and they're starting to put down some amazing dives. And uh, that's also so pushing me, you know. Thank you so much. I like the sound of that spice. Enjoy the celebrations. So, so round one is where it all begins, Joey. You can't win and be on top of the podium unless you are consistent for all four rounds. And that kicked off yesterday and went right into today. But for her to keep that composure, windy day yesterday, a little rougher water. 
Rhea Niflin showing you why she is the greatest of all time. And also a first to be winning a World Series title on home soil. Now that is an honor to say the least. Round three dive, the back triple. So graceful. And what she's known for is how to finish the dives. Digging deep, bang. And she was talking about trying new dives next year. Gary Hunt, for example, did a different intermediate dive at every single stop one of the years to challenge himself. She's a very, very versatile diver, but plenty of skills up her sleeve. And now in the last 20 stops over three seasons, she's won 19 of those competitions. And the only time you didn't, she didn't win is in Boston, where she was second to Molly Carlson. But Xanthia Panisi, a great story, yep. doing that in her home country, moving up into fourth, Just and like earning that. a position, a permanent diver spot for the 2023 series. Just by four points, snuck in there. And Ellie, for her. Yeah, and Ellie Smart, not only getting on the podium today, moving into third overall for the series and earning her position for the 2023 season. A lot of drama, a lot of things unfolded during the day, both on the men's side and the women's side. King Kaakili Trophy is being awarded shortly. Just to recap, if you joined us late during the women's competition, it was Katalin Freda who had a shot at winning the overall series. World Series and the King Kaakili Trophy on that dive. And then Aiden Heslop putting one down. Almost had it. Almost. When he had that high degree of difficulty dive, he rolled the dice and he had to wait for Gary Hunt to see how he perform his dive. He scored eight on the world's hardest dive. Superb. What an exciting young man. Gary Hunt, the most experienced athlete in the field, the greatest of all time, you and shows I, us you and I were why talking. he's the, <laughs> the greatest, and also the most, the most of all time, most, of all most time records. Everything. No, I was just going to say that it was pretty crazy. You mentioned how good of shape he is at his age, 48 yeah. years old, because he's training for the Paris Games in 2024. And yeah. he is continuing to roll. But now it is the award ceremony for this particular event before the presentation of the King Kaakili Trophy. Sydney at the final stop. Outstanding season by the Romanian. How about this kid? Oof. Taking it to the next level. Young Aiden Heslop. Watch out for him. Gary Hunt once competing as a Brit. Now competing for France, representing France but has really helped Aiden along the way. And now winning another event is Gary Hunt. Young Aiden Heslop was inspired by watching Gary Hunt just 12 years of age. Started with his feet first entries at his local diving pool and had his sights set on being a cliff diver. And now there he is standing with the great Gary Hunt. Who has 46 career victories now. 77 podiums and has never missed an event since his debut in 2009. Ever. Gary Hunt wins it. Aiden Hesloff second. Kathleen Preda third here in Sydney at the final stop. Man, the party will be wild. <laughs> time until we see those records broken. It's going to take over a decade. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good, good quick math. <laughs> so. so now the women's side, the top three. Ellie Smart, 
pulling things together under pressure, permanent diver position on the hook, and not only to deliver a top three finish today, but ends the entire season in third. And it's time for her to get onto the podium. Then in second place, Molly Carlson with this incredibly difficult dive, the quad half to cap off the competition. And she definitely put the pressure on Rihanna Nifland coming into the fourth and final round. But as Rihanna Nifland said, she knows how to handle pressure. And Joey, in a sport that the littlest of things can go wrong. Yeah. You could, have, you could have a stomach ache in the morning. You, you, you could <laughs> slip off the end of the platform just a teeny bit. But the waves might come up at the wrong time. The visuals can be difficult. Yeah. You might have sun glare. You might not be able to see the water all that well. Tall and proud. You should be Rihanna Nifland. A stellar performance throughout the entire season. King Kai Kelly trophies to come as well. 35 podiums now, 30 of them victories for Rihanna Nifland. of trophies. Whoa, what's funny is yeah, he's, he's, he, he, said, he said he doesn't know where a few of them are. Yeah, someone's still in transit, I heard. <laughs> and, 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 he said, I think I left a few in the luggage. And yeah, the did, yeah, at the after party. Or... Rihanna Niflin, she knows where all of her King Kong Keeley trophies are. And there's not much you could say other than wow when it comes to Rihanna Niflin. And an amazing season capping it off in her home country and the first time that the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series has come to Australia. Special moment for her. And the Rihanna Nifflin Express keeps on moving. What an emotional experience. It must be a sense of relief to win in front of a home crowd. Particularly the penultimate stop. In Italy, she just wanted to take the pressure of herself. 
and that allowed her to be nice and relaxed and calm and to take the victory here today in Sydney. <laughs> and Gary Hunt, the king of the King Kong Healy Trophy. They both stood on that podium many, many times before. Nothing but respect for these fine athletes. And they have a lot of respect for one another. They know how challenging this sport can be. So what is that? Gary Hunt's fourth straight. See, it's his tenth. He's won the trophy, but it's the fourth in a row. It's Reed's sixth in a row. Yeah. And so what an amazing day from Sydney, Australia. Winners, Rhiannon Nifflin, Gary Hunt, another successful season in the books. Big congrats to all the talented and amazing divers on a remarkable season, none of which can happen without our entire crew behind the scenes. Thank you all for your hard work. On behalf of David O'Queef and Joey Zuber, I'm Trace Worthington. Thank you for watching the 2022 Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. We'll see you next season.